Hi writers, today I'm talking about why you're failing at writing. Failing is a really strong word and I thought about it long and hard before I chose to use that word for this video because usually in my writing coach practice and in my classes with my students and my clients, I'm really careful about using the word fail, failure, failing, anything along those lines because I know it can be really triggering for some people and a lot of the time when I say we're failing at something, people who are highly sensitive, who are intuitive, who are creative, tend to really take that to heart and instantly will say, I'm failing, I'm a failure, I'm not a good writer, I'm not a good creative person, I'm not good at creating, whatever it is. So even just the word alone, failure or saying you're failing at something can really bring up a lot of shame. That is not my intent in today's video. Um, when I'm saying we are failing at writing, I don't mean that you're doing it wrong or you're supposed to be here, but instead you're here, so you should feel a lot of shame about that or we need to improve. This is not like a self-improvement program type of thing. I'm also not using it in the way that a lot of people use the word failure when they say, you know, try again, fail again, fail better. Like every failure brings you closer to success and you learn so much from failure. I do think it's really admirable when people try to put that spin on it, that failure is not a bad thing. I don't believe that failure is a bad thing. Um, however, I think sometimes we get a little bit strong with that spin. So every time we feel like we're failing or we feel like we've made a mistake or we've experienced a failure, we then try to really quickly push ourselves into a place where we're like, it's all right and this is good for me and I love it and I can't wait to fail again because with every failure, I'm improving, I'm getting better. I think sometimes that happens a little bit too quickly and we don't have the time that we need to emotionally process what a failure means to us or how we felt like we made that mistake, what was really in that mistake for us and we don't take the time to unpack our feelings around it. So I'm not putting that kind of spin on failure today either as like, oh, it's something great and it's something you should embrace because with every failure you get closer to your goal. Although that may be true in some cases. Today what I'm talking about, when I say that we are failing at writing, I mean that we are not in alignment with our writing. So what does that mean when I say we're not in alignment with our writing? When people have the calling to write, there's something deep inside of them that wants to come out. That is the most basic, simple way to put it. There's something deep inside of you that wants to come out. There's something deep inside of you that needs to be seen, that needs to be heard, that needs to be expressed to other people, to the world at large. Now that thing is different for everyone. It might be a memoir, it might be your life story, it might be a fictional story, it might be a cast of characters who are coming to you and talking to you and saying, I need you to share my story with the world. It might be poetry, it might be music, it might be something that no one's ever seen before. Maybe it's a combination of words and visual images and collage. You know, you're mixing things up in a way that's very innovative and that's very different and that people might not even know what to do with. A lot of times when we really start to get deep, deep, deep in touch with what's inside of us, that wants to come out, that's one of the first things we notice is, oh, this looks different than what I was expecting. This doesn't look like what I've seen other people do. This doesn't look like anything that maybe I could even describe to another person when I'm trying to tell them about that there's you know, something deep inside of me that wants to come out. There's something I really feel the need to express. It's very hard to verbalize that to other people. So what happens then we start looking around and we start comparing ourselves to others. We start looking at writers we admire, we start looking at artists we admire, and we start seeing what they're doing. And then we start looking at how other people are reacting to them. So we might say, you know, for instance, oh, I really love Elizabeth Gilbert. I read her book, Big Magic. It changed my life. It made me feel very inspired. I really saw a lot of myself in that book. It really resonated with me. And so because we had such a positive reaction to it, we start there. Oh, I'd love to be a writer like Elizabeth Gilbert. I also want to help people. I want to inspire people. I want to bring what's inside of me out to the world. So, you know, what does that mean for me? How am I like Elizabeth Gilbert? What can I take from that? And then we start looking around at how other people 
are reacting to Elizabeth Gilbert's book, okay? So we started with how we felt about it. I read this book, I really love it. How does that make me feel? And then we move to how does her audience feel? And we start seeing that. Oh, a lot of other people really loved Big Magic. They were also inspired. They also felt really helped by that. This is what they're saying about it. You know, I'm seeing a lot of praise. I'm seeing like these are the things that people are really highlighting that they like about her work and about her book, right? So now we've gone from how I feel about it to how other people feel about it. And then we start measuring ourselves based on that, right? Well, if I wrote my book, my memoir, my fictional story, whatever it is inside of me that wants to come out, what would people think of it? Would they react to it like they react to Elizabeth Gilbert? Would they react to it like I reacted to Elizabeth Gilbert's book? Now, it doesn't have to be Elizabeth Gilbert. You can insert any author in this situation. It's almost always going to be an author or an artist that you really admire and that really resonated with you. But we are comparing and we are measuring and we are imagining that if our book came out or if we shared our writing with the world, what is the reaction that we're gonna get back from other people? And is it gonna match the reaction that we want, right? Is it gonna match the reaction that we see in our minds when we envision releasing our book? Am I going to get the praise and the accolades and the compliments and the positive reaction, you know, whatever forms it takes, but are people gonna react positively to what I'm putting out to the world? And when we think about, well, what if they don't, right? That's the next question that comes up okay, what if I put my book out into the world and people don't like it? People don't want to praise it. In fact, they reject it or there's something in it that they find uh, threatening or controversial or they just disapprove of, right? Or maybe it's even that they find it boring, right? But what if I put my work out into the world and people don't like it in some way? What does that mean for me? And when we have that thought, when we start having those kinds of visions unfold in our mind, that's when everything changes. And we tend to have this very immediate emotional reaction. And it's a negative emotional reaction. We can feel it in our body. Our stomach drops. We might feel a tightening in our chest. Um, we feel a bit more closed down or a lot more closed down. We feel scared. We feel panicked. You know, like, what if I'm rejected? What if I'm disapproved of? What if people don't like my writing? You know, I'm, I, and then this, we really do feel like, well, I'm here and I need to be here and there's this big gap in between and I'm never going to fill that gap. I'm never going to get here. So I'm always going to be here and I'm not where I need to be. And other people are going to see that. They're going to notice that. They're going to reject me, right? So what we start trying to do to fill that gap, which is happening in our mind of like, oh, I'm not where I need to be with my writing or as a writer or with my story, with my memoir. I'm not the kind of writer I think I need to be because we've put this expectation on ourselves, we start frantically trying to fill that gap. And we do it by trying to write like other people. So in this case, we're thinking about our own book. Wow, I don't know if people are gonna like my memoir. I don't know if they're gonna like my novel. Maybe if I made it more like Big Magic, they would like it, right? Or maybe if I made it more like you know, insert name here, 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 whoever your favorite artist or author is. Maybe if I made it more like something that I know people do like nowadays, like people are very open to or are very like much praising in our society right now at this moment, then I will be safe. Then I won't be rejected. Then I won't be disapproved of. And I won't have to feel all of these negative emotions in my body that I'm feeling right now. I won't have to feel all of these negative sensations and this deep fear of being unloved and rejected. So what happens then? We come back to our writing practice and we're basically trying to write like someone else. We're trying to write in such a way that we get a positive reaction from other people. So this can take form in many ways. Like maybe we were writing something controversial and now we really tone it down because we don't want to offend anyone. Maybe we were writing something dark and we're really worried that people don't like dark stuff or they're gonna, not gonna like our dark stuff. So we try to make it much more lighthearted when that's not what it really is. That's not being true to the story. That's not being true to the work that actually is trying to come out of us. We try to change it in some way. And we try to change it with the motive of, I have to make this more palatable to other people. I have to make this more appealing to other people. So now the motive for 
our creative urge, our creative um, essence, the motive for our own creativity is how will other people react to this and how can I make other people react positively? And that's much different from the motive being, I need to bring this out of myself because this is something that's coming from my heart, my soul. This is something that is part of my true essence and I need to express this. This is self-expression for me. I need to bring this out into the world and share it as something that I need to do for me. That's much different. And that's why I say that's when we are failing at writing, right? When you are ignoring your true needs, your um, true creative urges, when you are ignoring what really wants to come out of your heart and your soul, and you're pushing that aside and you're saying, that's not acceptable, people aren't going to like it, people are going to judge it, um, I don't even know what to make of it. I'm confused by it. I'm embarrassed by it. I don't want to look at it. You're trying to shove all of that away. And instead, you're trying to write in a way that really taps into what you think other people expect of you. That's when you're failing at writing. Because any writing that you're doing where the main motive is how can I meet these expectations that I think are coming from other people. I think these expectations are coming from the outside, whether that's family and friends, or that's society, or that's my fellow writers, or that's the online writing community, wherever it is. But I think there, that there are these expectations in place. And I think that I need to meet these expectations. And if I don't meet these expectations, I'm going to be rejected as a writer. I'm going to be a bad writer, right? I'm going, my work is going to be rejected and disapproved of and judged if I don't meet those expecta expectations then you are writing in a different way and you're not self-expressing anymore. You're not engaging in self-expression. Now you're basically writing sort of like marketing copy for yourself, right? Like this is why I'm a good person and this is why you should like me and this is why you should like my story and this is the story everybody's writing. It's very popular nowadays, right? It's got this element and this element and I looked this up online and everybody thinks you should include this in your story. So. I've sort of like Frankensteined all these pieces together and here's this product that I think everyone will like and I don't think I could possibly get any negative reaction to it, right? In the realm of writing and art, it's impossible to stay safe. That's really it. At the bottom of it, it's impossible to stay safe. And the more you try to stay safe, the more you seek outside advice and outside opinions and you try to write to please others or you try to write to meet some sort of expectation that you think is in place for you or that you think is in place for all writers, the more you're going to lose the thread of your own creative essence. So you end up in this really horrible place where you're writing and maybe you're even writing quite a bit. Maybe you're writing every day or maybe you're really stacking up the word counts but you're not feeling <clears throat> a true connection to the writing any longer. That deep connection with your writing as a form of self-expression has been lost. And it's starting to feel like a chore, it's starting to feel like a job, and it's starting to just feel not very fun anymore. And this is when I get people coming to me and saying, I don't understand what's going on, I can't make myself write, or I can't finish anything, or I don't like what I'm writing, or I'm embarrassed of my writing, it doesn't feel good. There's this heavy dread hanging over it. The energy around the writing has now become very heavy and sluggish and it feels, um, it feels like very much like an obligation. This is something I have to do. I'm dragging myself through it, but it's just a task and I don't like it anymore and I don't understand what's happened because I used to like writing a lot and it used to be the love of my life and I've definitely lost that. So if you're feeling like that, if you're feeling like I don't know what happened between me and writing, but this isn't fun anymore. And I feel a very heavy energy around it. And I'm constantly worried about what other people might think. And I don't want to show anybody my writing, but I also can't seem to move forward in my writing. That's what's happening. You're failing at your writing because you've lost the thread. You've lost the connection to your own creative essence. And you're instead most likely trying to, to write in a way that meets these outside expectations that you believe are in place for your writing. If this topic is speaking to you, if you're watching this video and you're nodding along and you're like, oh good God, yes, this is me. I am teaching a new class all about this. It's called Finding Your Writing Voice. It's starting in 
January, it's three Wednesdays in January, it's a three week class, January 10th, January 17th, January 24th. All the classes are live 7 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern. They will also be recorded. I always record all of my classes, so you will have lifetime access to the recordings if you can't make it. I would love to see you there live. I love having people show up live to my classes. We always have a lot of fun. However, if you have a really busy schedule and you're like, I just can't make it live, please don't let that deter you from signing up for the class because I also always get a lot of students who consume it later. They'll sign up for the class and then they just watch the recordings. And even weeks later, they'll be sending me questions like, hey, I just finished class two. I know it's two months later, but I have a question about it. That's totally fine. I can always answer questions after the fact. So please don't let that stop you. If you're like, I don't think I can be there live, you can get the recordings and still get just as much of the benefit. I'm gonna be opening registration on this class soon. I'm gonna be doing two more videos in this series, give you a little taste of finding your writing voice and what that is all about. If you have questions in the meantime, please feel free to email me, lauren at laurensapala.com. I'd love to get the questions um, because I can also include some answers in the next few videos that come out. So please send me those questions, send me a message, and let's get the questions answered before I open up registration for this new class. I hope I see you there.